everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, and today I'm gonna show you how to harvest your homegrown peanuts. Now, I noticed that the farmers around me have begun harvesting the fields. And remember, I take notes from farmers all the time. They're my biggest motivation. I wanna try and do what they do and convert it to a home garden setting. So, I passed by some fields yesterday. We noticed that the peanuts had been turned up, which was my signal that it is time to come and yank mine out of the ground as well. Now you might remember these were planted back in mid-June when the soil temperature was really warm. And here in zone seven, you can actually plant peanuts as early as mid-May. But I generally like to wait until all of my spring plants are finished and I'm getting my summer crops planted usually in mid-June to the middle of July. That's plenty of time for peanuts to be able to mature. Most varieties that you're growing for roasting purposes will need to be in the ground between 100 and 120 days. If you're growing them for boiling, meaning the peanuts are less mature, that's actually 70 to 90 days. So it's really not that long of a time that they have to be planted in the ground. Now for people living in colder climates, you can grow peanuts, but it's generally recommended that you grow them in wide, relatively shallow containers because the key to successful peanuts is really hot soil temperature. Also well draining lean soils, which is why I do so well here in my sandy environment of a former tobacco field. Now peanuts are really awesome in that they're a legume, they're not a nut at all, and in fact the fruit that you harvest, the peanut, is technically a fruit. It's also a nitrogen fixer, so it's really wonderful to be able to benefit the other plants that you grow around it. So in this bed I was growing sunflowers, okra, and coleus with this ground cover of peanuts. Now the root knot nematodes are starting to really take an impact on the other plants in this bed and I've decided that today, along with harvesting the peanuts, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this bed and get it ready for planting for the cool season. And that'll involve using plants like mustards and violas, parsley, things that will grow all winter long here in Central North Carolina Zone 7. So before I start yanking these out of the ground, I wanted to show you the plants themselves. I have often waited until the foliage got like more yellow, but what I've learned from the farmers is that harvesting of peanuts is usually timed with warm, dry weather, and that's what we're having right now. The peanuts will need to actually sit in the sun to dry out for at least a week, usually a little bit longer, which is why I put them on a tarp so that if we start to get wet, I can drag them into a covered space and put a box fan on them. But here you can see the compound leaves looks very similar to like a pea. You can see how they're related. They're all in the Fabaceae plant family. And then the way that the peanuts actually form is that the plant flowers and then from where that flower was, there would have been a, a yellow flower at this internode, these pegs form. See these pegs? And the pegs actually drive down into the ground, which is why peanuts are generally considered to be a ground cover, because they sort of grow like a pancake shape, because these pegs pull the plant down and then the peanut itself actually forms on the tip of that peg. So here, we'll take this as an example. Some of these aren't fully mature, and I think there's more peanuts in here that when I pull them like this, I'm not actually getting all of the nuts. But there you can see the peanuts forming right there on the end of the peg. And now I'm just gonna toss this onto my tarp upside down so that the peanuts have good airflow and are in the sun to be able to begin drying out. All right, now I'm going to deconstruct this bed. I'm gonna pull out all of these peanuts, and then instead of using a fork, I'm actually gonna use my hands because I have a lot of tulips and things planted in this bed that may or may not still be there, and I don't wanna potentially damage them by using a 
pronged device to be able to dig up any of the extra peanuts that are falling off as I'm yanking these out of the ground. So here is one side of this bed's peanut harvest. It's not as many as I thought I would get, but I'm happy with it nonetheless. I just think they're so cool. And you know, I think part of the reason that my harvests are less than the farmers is that I have put so much organic matter into the soil. Like you can't even really tell that this is sand because I've been adding compost for 10 years. And you know, essentially what I have is this really delicious, almost like Midwestern textured soil that um, the peanuts don't struggle for anything when they're planted in this. Whereas in the fields, it's all sand and it's kind of an emergency response. They're forming the fruit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tear out the rest of these coleus. You know, they look really pretty. Um, they're, they're starting to cause um, kind of a mess in the pool. I'm gonna get the pool clean today because it's really warm. And um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep harvesting the peanuts. These, this giant patch is probably not going to have produced that much because it's been growing on, you know, brick. And this was actually one that self grew. Like it's, it was just a peanut I missed last fall or yeah, last fall when I was harvesting and then it, it just germinated and started growing. Um, and then I have some more peanuts over here. And for today, I'm just gonna concentrate on the peanuts in this bed. I'm not quite psychologically ready to come through and disturb all of my beds. For one thing, I don't have the plants to fill in. And, um, well, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to let go of summer. However, I do see that I need to start applying more BT because the damn cabbage worms are out here eating everything. So I'll just squash those two, but to put out some some BT today, otherwise they will decimate all of my fall cold crops, including kale, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, cabbage. All right, more progress. <laughs> Well, you can see I've got the feed tank bed completely emptied of the peanuts. I've decided to leave the back half of the coleus and those okra because I'm still harvesting the okra and I'm using those for seed for next year. That okra is heavy hitter. But I do have a, a pretty full um, area here of peanuts to dry. And I'm gonna just do what the farmers do. I'm gonna leave them Sitting out on this tarp, I'm going to move the tarp out to the driveway so that it doesn't impact the um, grass and let them sit and bake in full sun. And, and tonight I will probably drag them into the garage and that way rodents won't eat them and then pull them back out tomorrow. It's going to be hot and sunny. And then eventually, probably by the end of the week, I'll actually remove the fruit from the plant. So then it'll be much easier. I'll be able to just stash them into a bucket and let them dry for a few days longer. It's time for me to drag this big tarp full of yesterday's peanut harvest out into the full sun to continue to dry. I hope you'll be inspired to include peanuts in your next season's home garden. Remember, peanuts are a warm season legume that fix nitrogen. All you do is thumb the seeds into the soil, usually mid-May to mid-June, let them grow all summer long, and then you'll be harvesting sometime in October when your weather is hot, dry, and sunny. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, share it with a friend, give me a thumbs up, and be sure to hit that bell notification so you'll know when I post more videos. 
and I will be giving you updates on my 2021 peanut crop during my weekly garden tours. So tune into those to learn more. Thanks so much for watching everybody.